so living environment friends and others <laughs> friends and foes yeah it's thursday hockey jersey thursday i must be wearing some kind of hockey jersey today in class although i'm not wearing it now because i'm filming this on wednesday the day before hockey jersey thursday and why do i know this because i play the friday song every friday that's how i know what day it is anyway um yeah i think you'll enjoy our new topic as we move on we're going to talk about the original genetic engineering or mixing of genes that's right you got it reproduction <laughs> Mr. Kovacs class. It's Mr. Kovacs class. You might learn on time. It's Mr. Kovacs class. He's interested too. It's Mr. Kovacs class. And he's super cool. It's Mr. Kovacs class. Who's the monkey that's really fine? It's Andy. It's Andy. Who's the monkey who's right on time? It's Andy. It's Andy. Who's the monkey that's peachy keen? It's Andy. It's Andy. Who's the monkey with the jellyfish gene? It's Andy, everybody. Andy. My glowing monkey army will take over the world. Stop it, Andy. Stop it. They will. Stop it. Ah, uh, yes. Andy, of Andy. course, was not born the old-fashioned way. Andy was what we call an in vitro. Or Gattaca, he would be a normal, but in... Uh, nowadays, we're not in Gattaca land, so it's kind of abnormal to be in vitro. That means um, he was basically conceived in a test tube, right? He was conceived. Um, but we know that Andy was conceived in such a way where they were able to manipulate his genes. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about the original gene manipulation, which was mixing up of, of genes. And that required a special evolutionary step. And that's what we're going to get into today this evolutionary step that allowed the first kind of gene manipulation. Right, children, it's time to talk about the birds and the bees, but we'll also talk about the marine flatworms and the seahorses and the coral reef wrasse and lots of other animals that reproduce sexually. And sexual reproduction is the original gene tinkering. Think of it that way. First life on earth, right? Where archaea, where uh, archaea or bacteria and they just copied themselves. So all of their offspring were identical. The only time there was any change is if there was some kind of mutation, an error in copying, okay? And there's advantages to that. There's advantages to have everybody looking the same, that's for sure. But somewhere um, along the line, we figured out that uh, a way to switch genes up, and there became much more an advantage to have your genes switched up than to be exactly the same as all of your brothers and sisters, and, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. That big evolutionary step was the development of what's called a gamete. The gamete are what we call haploid cells, okay? Haploid, um, meaning they have half the genes as a typical cell, all right? So gametes, and the beauty of gametes is you could take two gametes, two haploid cells, put them together, and you get a diploid or a full cell, all right? Two haploids make a diploid. Uh, diploid is a full cell. Okay. The gametes that we know now, of course, are um, the two gametes that you're familiar with. You probably didn't even know, but it's the small gamete, right? Which is basically just a nucleus. And then a large gamete, which has a lot more in it besides just a nucleus. We call the small gamete is called a sperm cell. And a large gamete is called an egg or ova. What's special about these cells is that these cells only have half of the DNA in them, right? It's half of the DNA in them. So the evolutionary step was how do we make cells with only half the DNA in them? That way we can exchange genes between organisms and mix up our DNA to get something different than mom or dad. Well, that happens through uh, something called meiosis, meiosis. Meiosis. Yes, it looks a lot like mitosis, and that was done to confuse biology students. Meiosis is different from mitosis in that you wind up with a different product. In mitosis, you, you copy your DNA and split once, you wind up with two daughter cells that are the same. In meiosis, you copy your DNA once but split twice, you wind up with 
four gametes, which are not the same. Each have half of what you started with. All right, so you started here with two chromosomes, copied them, now you have four chromosomes, right? You split once, you have two chromosomes in each cell that's still four. Split again without copying, now you have one chromosome in each of these cells. You have haploid cells, half of what you started with. We call those gametes. And this process is called meiosis, meiosis. You won't need to know in particular all the steps of meiosis, but it's basically mitosis twice, right? It's meiosis one goes through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then meiosis two goes through prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two, and then finally you split into haploid gametes, right? All right, in males, or we, we now, we'll call them sperm makers, because um, we're just talking about the gametes they make. Sperm makers, make the small gamete. They basically take their uh, pre-gamete cells, copy, split twice, and you wind up with four identical daughter cells, which are really tiny rinky-dink cells we call sperm cells. Eggs are a little bit different. Eggs made by egg makers. Eggs are proto-cell, copies once. It does the same thing. It copies once, splits twice, but it doesn't split evenly each time. So you wind up with one big cell and you wind up with basically three little teeny tiny cells. That one big cell we call the ovum or the egg, the egg. Right, so meiosis, copy once, split twice, and you wind up with these haploid cells. So there's some fun new vocabulary today. We're gonna to talk about gametes, gametes. We're gonna talk about haploid and diploid cells. Um, you might remember we talked about ploidy when we did strawberries, those were octoploid. Interesting, right? Um, you and I, our regular cells are diploid, but our gametes are haploid. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about the development of sperm cells and egg cells, and then some other interesting things about the birds and the bees and the seahorses and the flatworms and the coral reef wrasse and lots of other organisms that reproduce sexually by mixing up their genes. The original genetic engineering.